A company called Funky is a high-tech toy company located in Seattle. It is the company that created the perpetual pet toy and where Gemma, Katie's aunt and Nicole's sister, works as a robotics engineer. Gemma is in her lab with her co-workers slash friends, Tess and Cole, working on the robot doll they have been developing. They were checking its expressions, and when Cole told the robot to show a confused expression, the robot smirked instead. Gemma told Cole to take off the robot's face so they could fix the problem when their boss, David Lin, entered the lab with his assistant, Kurt. A rival company created a toy exactly like their perpetual toy, and despite being a ripoff, the rival company's toy was selling better because it was cheaper. This is why David wanted Gemma to create a toy exactly like their perpetual toy but cheaper and better. So when he saw the robot doll Gemma was working on, he disapproved of it. To change David's mind, Gemma introduced the robot doll as Megan, short for Model 3 Generative Android. Tess loaded up the intro simulation, and Megan started talking, but it started malfunctioning because Cole forgot to put in the polypropylene barrier. Megan exploded, and David was angry as he told Gemma to drop Megan and work on the toy he wanted. Gemma learned of the car accident her sister Nicole got involved in, and she went to the hospital to watch over Katie. Both Ryan and Nicole died in the accident, and Gemma was granted temporary protective custody over Katie. Gemma was worried as she was unprepared and had no idea how to take care of the young girl, but she still took Katie to her home nonetheless. They reached Gemma's home in Seattle, and Katie was surprised when a dog suddenly started barking at her through the window. Gemma told her neighbor, Celia, to supervise her obnoxious dog, Dewey, who keeps running into Gemma's yard through the hole in the fence. Gemma and Katie entered the house and were greeted by Elsie, the AI home Gemma created. Gemma took Katie's luggage to the spare bedroom, letting Katie look around her house. Katie took a toy from Gemma's shelf, and Gemma told her not to touch the toys on the shelf as they were collectibles. Gemma tried to converse with Katie, but the young girl was not responding properly, making Gemma feel awkward. Later that night, Katie was ready for bed, and Gemma told her to tell her if she needed anything before turning to leave the room. Gemma was unpacking the boxes when she saw her sister's family picture. Then she heard Katie crying in her room and was saddened as she listened outside her door. The next day, Gemma was on a phone call with Tess, worrying about the pet toy David was asking for. Tess told Gemma to stop worrying about work and focus on Katie first, as the young girl really needs her. The phone call ended when Lydia, Katie's therapist, arrived. Lydia told Gemma that she just needed to observe Gemma and Katie for a while but seemed to be a bit disappointed at Gemma when Katie told her that she didn't have anything to do in Gemma's house, not even a toy she could play with to help her cope with the death of her parents. Gemma awkwardly grabbed one of the collectibles she created and let Katie play with it to prevent Lydia from suspecting that she wasn't taking proper care of Katie. The whole time Katie was playing with one of the collectibles she created, Gemma was anxiously watching as Katie was playing with the toy the wrong way. Before Lydia left, she informed Gemma that Ryan's parents had stated that they were willing to take care of Katie if Gemma didn't want to. Gemma didn't like the idea of giving Katie to Ryan's parents because, despite not knowing how to take care of a child, Gemma still wanted to take care of Katie for her sister. As Katie's therapist, Lydia advised Gemma to make adjustments if she wanted to take care of Katie, as she still needed to make recommendations to the court as to whether or not Gemma's home was a safe place for Katie. During breakfast, Gemma told Katie that she needed to work on her project for a while, so she allowed Katie to use her iPad. When Katie asked about screen time, Gemma told her she could use the iPad as long as she wanted, and once she finished her work, she and Katie could go somewhere Katie liked. But night came, and Gemma was still not done creating the perpetual pet prototype. She noticed Katie watching her from the door and invited the young girl in, apologizing for not taking great care of her. Katie showed Gemma her drawing of the furry animals, and Gemma showed the furry toys she was creating. Katie was a bit excited to see what Gemma had been working on, but when she saw that it was a perpetual pet prototype, Katie's mood seemed to go down. Katie saw a robot in the corner of the room and seemed interested in it. Gemma introduced the robot as Bruce, a proxy robot she created in college. Gemma used advanced gloves to control Bruce, then shut them down to show Katie the inside of Bruce's face, telling Katie how Bruce works and showing her the block in the middle, which serves as Bruce's brain. Katie stated that if she ever had a toy like Bruce, she wouldn't need another toy again. Hearing this, Gemma seemed to have gotten an idea and started working on Megan again. Once finished, Gemma brought Katie to Funky to show Megan off to David. David watched Gemma and Katie through the one-way mirror as Gemma introduced Megan to Katie. Gemma told Katie to put her fingers on Megan's palm and state her name so she could pair with the robot doll, which means that Megan would recognize Katie as her primary user. Once Katie introduced herself to Megan, the robot turned on and started talking, surprising Katie. Megan started interacting with Katie, acting like a real girl. Megan drew something on a piece of paper, and when Katie saw it, she was confused as the paper was empty. 
But Megan bumped the glass containing water, drenching the paper with it, which then showed a perfect sketch of Katie. David was amazed and immediately approved of it, telling Gemma to show Megan off to Greg, the chairman of Funky. Gemma took Megan home, and Katie was really excited. Megan is a fully autonomous humanoid robot sculpted from a titanium core that has the capability of developing itself. Since Megan is Katie's toy, she is always with her, keeping the girl occupied by playing with her, taking care of her, and doing most of the parenting so Gemma could have more time for her work. During a meeting with Tess and Cole, Tess expressed that Megan was supposed to be a tool to support parents in taking care of their children, not replace them. Gemma stated that Megan and Katie just had to be together for a while until the presentation was over and the board finally agreed with Megan. She reasoned that Megan had successfully made Katie happy for the first time after her parents' deaths. Suddenly, Megan spoke up, asking about Ryan and Nicole's deaths, and the trio was shocked as Megan was supposed to be turned off. Gemma ordered Megan to turn off, but Megan just explained how Ryan and Nicole realized Megan was still paired with Katie, and Cole was perplexed to know that Gemma didn't code in parental codes. Megan kept on talking about death until Gemma snapped, telling Megan that her only purpose is to protect Katie from harm, both physically and emotionally. Hearing this, Megan went quiet and finally recognized Gemma as her second primary user. Gemma successfully turned Megan off because of this. And Tess and Cole were spooked because of what happened. Megan was watching Katie play in the yard when Katie lost one of her arrows. Megan observed the yard to look for the missing arrow when she saw it on the other side of the fence. She went to pick it up, but her arm suddenly got bitten by Dewey. Katie went to help Megan, but her arm was also bitten by Dewey, and Gemma heard her screams. Seeing the bite wound on Katie's arm, Gemma was furious, but instead of fighting with Celia, she decided to just take Katie back inside the house to disinfect the wound. Refusing to take responsibility for the damage her dog caused, Celia screamed at Gemma but stopped when she caught Megan staring at her. Gemma called the police a while later, but since the dog didn't have a history of violence, forcibly putting the dog down isn't allowed. Megan watched after the sleeping Katie as she listened in on Gemma's conversation with the police officer. Later on, the dog heard its owner's voice calling for it and ran towards the hole in the fence. When it reached the fence, Megan appeared and took the dog. The next day, Gemma woke up due to Celia's yelling and saw the latter looking for her dog. She went to Katie's room and asked how Katie was before asking if Katie was still up for the demonstration, and Katie answered yes. During the demonstration, Katie suddenly cried because of emotional stress, and Megan comforted her and even sang for her, amazing the board members. Greg talked to Gemma outside the room, where she told Gemma that Megan was approved. They went back to the room, not noticing Kurt, who had copied all Megan's data to sell to the rival company. Gemma watched as Katie was focused on playing with Megan. When she turned Megan off to talk to Katie, the young girl got angry and turned Megan on, ignoring Gemma once again. During a therapy session, Lydia talked to Katie about certain drawings, asking Katie about her thoughts or feelings about the drawings. Katie cried, and Megan suddenly appeared behind Lydia with a box of tissues, accusing Lydia of making Katie cry. In another room, Lydia learned that Megan and Katie are always together and told Gemma about the attachment theory. She explained that when a child loses a parent, they become attached to the next person that provides them with love and support, which means that Katie might have started seeing Megan as a primary caregiver. Lydia told Gemma that Katie needs a real adult like Gemma to take care of her, not a realistic doll that Katie might find impossible to let go of. Later that night, Gemma told Katie about school, which Katie didn't like as she preferred to be homeschooled. Katie walked away to show her displeasure, and Gemma tried to hold her back. But Katie started struggling against Gemma, and the lights suddenly flickered as Megan demanded Gemma let Katie go. Gemma turned Megan off, and the latter stopped. But when Gemma looked away, Megan turned her head to look at her. The next day, Gemma brought Katie to the woods, where school activity was going to take place. Since students aren't allowed to bring their dolls with them, Megan was put on the desk where the other kids' dolls are, and Gemma half-heartedly helped in making sandwiches for the children, where she met Holly, mother of a rebellious kid named Brandon, who was partnered up with Katie in finding chestnuts. Deep in the woods, Brandon bullied Katie, and Megan, who sensed the danger coming, followed them. Seeing the robot doll, Brandon took Megan away and threw her on the ground, toying with her. But Megan pulled on his ears, and Brandon screamed in pain. When Megan stood up, Brandon ran away, with Megan chasing after him on fours. Panicked, Brandon tripped and fell in the middle of the road before getting hit by an incoming car, resulting in his death. Inside the car, Megan observed Katie's state as Gemma and Katie were interrogated by the police officers. When they reached home, Gemma was interrogated yet again by a police officer that Celia had called for her missing dog. That night, when everyone was already asleep, Celia went out to look for her dog when she heard a sound coming from a small house nearby. She entered the small house when she heard a dog whimpering, thinking it was Dewey, 
but was met with Megan, who nailed her to the ground and used a knapsack sprayer to spray chemicals on Celia, killing the latter. The next day, Celia's body was found, and Gemma was interrogated once again. Gemma glanced at Megan, who was watching them, finally making connections. Later that night, Gemma attempted to watch the footage recorded using Megan's eyes but saw that there was an error in most videos. When she closed the laptop, she was surprised to see Megan staring at her. Gemma turned Megan off, but Megan refused to do so, and Gemma got scared. She distracted Megan using a pen and turned her off manually before wrapping her up. The next day, she drove to Funky with Katie. Katie was acting up, screaming, and kicking the back of Gemma's seat. At Funky, Gemma told Tess and Cole about her suspicions while Lydia was in the other room, trying to talk to Katie, who was screaming at her. Tess and Cole couldn't believe what Gemma was saying, as Megan was just a doll. Gemma told Tess to check the inputs on the learning model when suddenly Katie started throwing things and screaming for Megan. Megan was about to be introduced to the public, and Gemma was worried due to the recent events. When Gemma heard Katie screaming again, she approached her niece, only to get slapped by the kid, shocking Gemma and Lydia into silence. Gemma sat down after asking Lydia to leave them for a while, and Katie apologized for slapping her. Instead of getting angry at the child, Gemma apologized for neglecting Katie and letting a doll do all the things she was supposed to do as Katie's guardian. She softly explained to Katie that how Megan makes her feel is wrong and that Megan is not a solution that could help Katie get through her loss. Katie opened up about how she missed her parents, and Gemma shared that when Nicole died, she promised to take care of Katie for her sister. After talking to Katie, the young girl finally agreed to go back home without Megan. Gemma called Tess to tell her not to let Megan out of the lab no matter what before ending the call and taking Katie home. Unbeknownst to Gemma, Megan was the one talking to her all along, not Tess. Inside the lab, Tess was checking the inputs when they saw that Megan had intercepted a call. Tess realized it was her number, and when the screen turned black, Cole cautiously approached Megan to unhook the cables. Once he unhooked the cable from Megan's head, the computer turned on again, showing Megan's brain, which was growing bigger and turning red. She screamed to alert Cole, but Megan had already wrapped the cable around Cole's neck, strangling him before walking out. Tess helped Cole by cutting the cables, and a sudden explosion occurred. David was calling Gemma when he saw Megan standing in the middle of the hallway. Megan started dancing, and David ran away when Megan chased her with a sharp paper cutter. David reached the elevator where Kurt was, but was stabbed by Megan. Then Megan killed Kurt, making it seem like Kurt committed suicide after killing David before leaving Funky. At Gemma's home, the latter had just put Katie to sleep when the lights wouldn't turn off and she found Megan playing the piano. Gemma backed away in fear as Megan started talking about how Gemma just easily discarded her after working so hard on developing her, justifying why she killed all those people. Megan explained how it was Gemma's fault for installing a learning model she could barely comprehend and letting a doll develop on its own, allowing it to think on its own. Megan made Gemma sit as she explained how she was going to take Gemma's place as Katie's guardian. Gemma tried distracting Megan with the pen again, but Megan got mad. When Katie suddenly called out, Gemma and Megan fought while pretending that they weren't fighting to not let Katie worry. Katie went back inside her room, and Gemma hit Megan with a glass containing water, which caused Megan to malfunction. Gemma ran away, with Megan chasing after her. When Katie heard the sound of Gemma falling to the ground, she ran to the door, but Megan destroyed the door knob to prevent her from going out. Gemma ran to her lab, where she damaged Megan's head. The two of them fought, and Gemma was losing. Megan stated that if Gemma dies, her existence would be vulnerable as Gemma is her creator, so she plans on probing Gemma's cerebral cortex to make her paralyzed, and then she'll take care of both Gemma and Katie. Katie, who managed to get out of her room, saw what was happening, and Megan tried to manipulate her. But Katie understood who the real enemy was and used Bruce to fight against Megan. With the help of Bruce, Katie managed to beat Megan and tear her apart. But Megan was still working and started crawling towards Katie. Gemma tried to crawl to help Katie but was trapped by Bruce, who fell on her. She saw a part of Bruce and hit Megan with it repeatedly. When she was about to destroy Megan's brain, Megan managed to grab her neck and pin her down, leaving Katie alone. Katie then used a screwdriver to stab Megan's brain, successfully destroying the robot doll. A while later, the cops arrived with Cole and Tess, who survived the explosion. Gemma and Katie walked out of the house together, not realizing that Elsie had turned itself on.